Hey there, welcome to this video. We're gonna be walking through an advanced way to do Google Ads competitor analysis by doing manual keyword classification. So if you wanna understand uh, what is your Google Ads competitor's keyword strategy and ultimately what is their budget allocation, now there is no definite way to know for 100% certainty how much they're investing on any one keyword, but this strategy will give you a good understanding on what does their keyword allocation mix up look like so where are they focusing their efforts? And then from there, you can make some assumptions on, well, if the majority of their keywords fall into these different classifications, then it's likely that they're investing this much budget into those classifications. So this is an advanced way of doing Google Ads competitor analysis that isn't often talked about, uh, does require some manual upfront work, but can be very worthwhile if you're really trying to make a big impact with your Google Ad campaigns from the start. So I'm gonna be using Udemy for the sake of example here. And in order to do this classification, you do need to have a paid tool, some sort of keyword research tool like SEMrush or SpyFu or any other one, but you need a tool that allows you to see the keywords that your competitor is bidding on with ads. So these have to be paid keywords. So I'm gonna use Udemy here for the sake of example. And I went ahead and re looked up Udemy on SEMrush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export the keywords for Udemy that they're actually running ads against. So once you export that list, you're gonna get a CSV file like this. And what I recommend that you do is that you filter based on the last seen column and you filter by the most recent month. So in my case, uh, filming this video in May, it's May. So I'm filtering by my most recent month. And the reason why I recommend you do this is because it's automatically gonna just remove a lot of irrelevant inactive keywords. And we only wanna be seeing active keywords as this manual classification can take some time. So once we've done that, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a new column, a custom column, and we're gonna call it theme. And this is gonna be representative of the campaign theme. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna manually classify each one of these different keywords, leveraging the filtering options in Excel to classify each keyword based on the campaign theme that it falls under. In my experience managing Google Ad campaigns, there's five primary campaign themes that 99% of all Google Ad campaigns fall under. The first one is non-brand. This is bidding on keywords that have high intent nature and do not involve your brand name. The second one is branded campaigns. Brand campaigns are bidding on your actual brand name. The third one is competitive campaigns. These are bidding on keywords that represent your competitors' names. The fourth one is RLSA campaigns. This is remarketing lists for search ads. These are really hard to classify, so that is a downside of this approach, is you're gonna struggle classifying RLSA campaigns because a RLSA campaign is bidding on a high intent non-brand keyword that also happens to leverage an audience, and it's hard to understand that just from this approach, so that is limitation. And then finally, fifth is content. So bidding on informational keywords that are educational focus, so how to, what is, uh, things like this. So those are the five classifications, and we're gonna go ahead now and manually classify each one of these keywords based on those different classifications. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video, run this classification, and then I'll come back to you with the next step. All right, so I went ahead and classified all of my different keywords by theme, and just uh, some quick tips on how to do it is number one, search for your competitor's name to be able to find brand classification. Uh, number two, search for relevant competitors to be able to find competitive classification. And uh, number three, the difference would be the non-brand keyword. So that's a, a way to think about leveraging the filters here and then searching for, so in my case, I did Udemy and then I was able to classify all of it as brand and, and so on and so forth, just to make it much easier for you. Uh, you could also take this export and put it into ChatGPT and then say ChatGPT based on these parameters, do the classification for me. Uh, so you could try that as well. Just know it's not always perfect. So you have those two options at your disposal. So once you have the classification done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go ahead and put this into a pivot table. And now we're gonna get a pretty good sense of what our competitor's strategy looks like. So I'm gonna put theme here and keyword, and I'm gonna move theme to the rows, keywords to the values. I'm gonna just update my label here to theme and uh, we're gonna sort by largest to smallest. So let's go ahead and remove blanks. So blanks were irrelevant keywords. So when you're going through the classification too, you could also filter it down based on keywords that are relevant to your business that you actually find yourself where you have overlap and you'd want to bid on. Uh, you could do that as well. 
And you could get even more granular, like you could do non-brand, uh, like for example, Udemy, they had a lot of certification keywords. I could have done non-brand certification, non-brand courses, non-brand classes, whatever you think is gonna be helpful in terms of those insights of how you can then uh, leverage this to your advantage. So I'm gonna go ahead in here and just put a quick percentage formula just so I can understand what does the makeup look like in terms of their allocation. And just doing a really quick view here, I can see 87% of their keywords fall under non-brand, 9% brand, 4% content, and very little of it is competitive. I only found six and that was like related to Coursera, but they don't do a lot. So me as a potential competitor of Udemy, I can already get a really good sense now of their keyword strategy. So now I can make some assumptions. Well, if they're doing 87% of their budget on non-brand keywords, or I should say, let me rephrase that. If 87% of their keywords are non-brand, then it's pretty good to assume that the majority of their budget is going towards non-brand keywords. And then the second one is brand and the third one is competitive. So if I want to, like Pablo Picasso says, uh, steal inspiration, I can take this and then I can say, you know what, let's start off with non-brand ourselves, And then you can dive into it a little bit further as well if you wanna do even further analysis. So for example, I can now come in here and then under non-brand, I can try to understand, is there a pattern of keywords that fall under this non-brand bucket? There was a lot of like junk and irrelevant keywords. So if I was really doing this for real, I would clean it up and to delete the irrelevant keywords that don't match my business. So then this can become even more actionable. So for example, within non-brand, uh, maybe for Udemy, of this, uh, what is it, 87%, maybe, 45% of them are course related keywords. And then another 20% are class related keywords. And then another 15% are certification related keywords. And I can start to kind of unpack and understand what it is that my competitor is doing in terms of their keyword strategy. And ultimately from there, make some inferences on how they're actually investing their budget in dollars. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.